Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Shoot Your Shot Photography Show. Welcome back. My name is Ben Jacobson. I'll be your host today. Um, and if this is your first time joining us for Shoot Your Shot, welcome. We enjoy and appreciate that you're here. Um, today, we actually have a very special guest joining us from Spain, actually. Yaga Ruiz is going to be here talking with us about street photography, photographing different cultures from around the world, and just kind of a little bit of background about him. He's a fantastic artist, and we're going to learn a little bit more about what he does today and kind of how things, uh, how things kind of come together for him as he's building these bodies of work. So we're super excited about that. Um, again, with this being one of our, let's see, today is our sixth, I think today's the sixth episode, so we're super excited to be continuing this. Um, you guys are such a huge part of this, the audience, um, so if you can do me a huge favor, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel grow, it helps me continue to do these shows, and, and lets me know that it's something that you guys are interested in. So um, thank you guys again so much for your continued support, and uh, we really appreciate it. Um, if you guys are catching this afterwards and you're not able to catch the live stream, that's totally great. We're going to be recording this and having it up online for you as well later on. So definitely uh, look out for that. Um, and we encourage you guys to ask questions. If you have some questions about what we're talking about or you'd like to interact, like we definitely encourage that too. So um, I'll do my best to kind of keep an eye on the comments as they come in. I'm running a little bit light today. I'm a one-man show, but we're going to make it work and we're going to make it uh, awesome. So. Without any further ado, I want to introduce uh, my friend and fellow photographer, Yago Ruiz. He is a street photographer, as I mentioned. He is actually currently based out of Spain right now um, and also based out of London. So, um, Yago, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Ben, for the opportunity of being here with you and uh, with this interview. Uh, I'm really excited to to speak here with you and to talk about my work and, and travels I have been doing the past years and so on. So uh, I have to say I'm in Spain now because I have had a baby <laughs> a year, uh, a year, no, a month and a half uh, uh, ago. And this is why I'm in Spain, but I'm currently based in London for, the past, That's for awesome. the past three years and a half. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> so you are, uh, you're based out of London and you're in Spain right now. Um, mm -hmm. And you said you've been in Spain for how long? Uh, for two months now. For two months. <clears throat> I, yeah, two months. I came in February, yeah, to have uh, the baby. But uh, I have been in London for the past three years and a half. Nice. And where were you at before that? Sorry? Where were Say you me? at before London? Before London, uh, I was in Spain to to get married. <laughs> nice. And before, before that, I was uh, living in Ethiopia for a year as well, in 2015 to 2016, I was living in Ethiopia. So the past five years, I've been for uh, outside of Spain, three and a half in London and one in Ethiopia. Yeah. Awesome. So that kind of helps draw a little bit more the picture of, of kind of your work. Um, I mean, you have some incredible work from, um, I mean, there's a big majority of it that is in, in London. It, as well as um, you know Ethiopia, and you've traveled quite a few different places. How do you kind of find yourself in some of these different environments that allow you to get such impactful photographs? Um, <clears throat> the point is, uh, I really love traveling. I started traveling before taking pictures many years before. You know, I started traveling with my mother mainly because she loves traveling, and I went with her and uh, at some point in India in 20 in 2008 uh, I found there it was the place to start taking pictures because the travel there was very impressive for me the poverty the situation there you know it's very strong and I thought at that moment man I, I have to take pictures I have to to document this situation somehow, you know, and photography was probably the easiest way, you know, because I don't know how to write <laughs> or, or write properly, you know, in a proper way. And, and speaking, of course, is not my way or doing other things. So photography was like the easiest way to, to start doing, doing this. So um, this is like the, my starting point in photography. So you said that it kind of started because of your love of travel. Um, 
what brought you to India? What was the, was it, were you just visiting for like a, a vacation or was it? Yeah, yeah, basically tourism. We were there three weeks and, uh, <clears throat> and that's it. And, but it was my first travel outside Europe and, and uh, there uh, was the place where I understood that uh, the world is different than Europe or the Western countries, you know, because if you travel uh, along Europe or in the United States probably or Western countries, you understand I, most of the things are more, more or less the same, you know. But outside in, in outside Europe, uh, Africa and Asia and Latin America and so on is quite different and, and really, really strong uh, situations, very, very different than, than, than Western countries, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have noticed, I feel like when, uh, when I travel, there's, there's always some sort of desire to find something that is different. Like, I think for me, traveling is not necessarily um my my key motivator in traveling is not like for for relaxation and for like unwinding like for me like when i travel and when i go especially out of the country like i want to find something that that changes my view It, it changes literally like what i see so i'm seeing new cultures that i'm not used to new customs um new ways of living and being able to do that inside of a different country, I, I entirely understand how it can be, uh, you know, a catalyst to make you want to become a photographer or make you wanting to take yeah. pictures because um, sh- seeing something so different, like you almost want to just like take that back with you. And photography seems like a really good avenue in order to do that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you just start. I mean, usually people start uh, taking pictures because they want to remember. Like, it's the first, uh, the first uh, purpose of photography. You know, just take pictures, t- taking pictures to remember where you have been before, or in previous years, or remember your family, or whatever. You know. But if you go in deep, little by little, in photography, at some point you understand that it's also a language. It's a way of speaking to others. You know, to to show how they live. For example, when I was in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia I have been three three times, three different times. In 2013, I was for four months as a volunteer. In 2015 to 2016, for nine months. And also in 2017, I was just a couple of weeks. But uh, <clears throat> my purpose taking, taking pictures in Ethiopia was just uh, to show the way of living there, you know, not the classic very um, exotic images, you know, mm-hmm. which is usually what people see. If you check my website, we will go through it uh, later. You will see that it's uh, daily life, you know, this is how they live. And it's not, it's not <coughs> uh, these exotic pictures, as, as I'm saying, you know, and this is what, this is what I try to do when, when I'm traveling ar- around different countries, you know, just to show not only the classic uh, pictures, which are okay, I mean, you can take them, it's not a problem, but also uh, specific situations or, situ- or scenarios or places or way of living of the people, you know. Yeah, and I think that might even be one of the things that drew me to your work. Um, I found you through Instagram and um, I, I, as soon as I saw it, like that was something that stood out to me so much is just your ability to show um, what normal life looks like for a lot of these people. Um, and I think that is what's interesting about it is because it's it's not necessarily the exotic setup shots where it's, you know, I think we all kind of like have seen a handful of those where it's like it's a tourist type photo almost. It's you're trying to create or or make a scene be more exotic than it is rather than just showing directly what's happening. And, and a lot of your photographs, I think, represent like the more realistic side of a lot of these folks, uh, their daily life. Um, I mean, even there's a specific shot I'm thinking of that is uh, of the Taj Mahal. And it's, it, it's not the most iconic shot. Like there's always like the iconic shot of it straight on and yeah, with everything, reflection everything the looks water, great so. and the water is perfectly pristine. And, um, I mean, I think actually I have it here. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm using new software, so bear with me a little bit, but I think, 
Um, I can pull it up on this screen over here, but there's just something that's really cool about it that um, it's it's not showing like the glamour. It's not showing like the reflecting pools and it's not showing like the most exact thing. But what it is showing is in the bottom of the scene here, you see people carrying uh, their goods and they're, they're you know, going to and from their house or, or wherever it is. But what they're doing is they're, they're living their lives in exactly. an iconic photograph scene. Like it's a scene that is photographed millions of times, maybe billions. And because of that, like these people are, they're just living their life. They, they don't know any different. They're going through and they know that it's, of course, an iconic building, but that in that photograph to me, it stood out as, oh, these people are just doing daily life. And that was something that was really impactful to me. Yeah, exactly. I'm, in fact, one of, oh, one of the purposes when I'm traveling is just to try to shot uh, pictures in these iconic places, you know, but uh, trying to find a different point of view, you know. This is something that, uh, I, I mean, of course, it's not mine, you know, because you, you, you learn from others. And this is something I, I learned from Steve McCurry, you know. You check uh, his body of work, you see these iconic places, really impressive places, and the pictures are different, you know, because there is always a person somewhere and uh, the point of view is a different one. <clears throat> in fact, this picture you have shown is when I was uh, there in, in Agra, it's, uh, visiting the Tak Majal. We spent there like a couple of days or three. And of course, you go and you spend uh, three, four, five, six hours uh, visiting the, the gardens and inside the place and so on, which is the classic picture, you know, with the, mm -hmm. the water and the reflection and so on. But if you look for other points of view, you have to walk, you have to take a, a, a budget, which is the, these small motorcycles. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have to move around and, and just invest time because I consider it's, it's uh, investing time, you know, not spending, it's investing time to look for these uh, different pictures, let's say different. So it's street photography because it's daily life, you know, in the streets. And these are the streets of India, of course, for example, this picture. But uh, the scenarios are, are really impressive you know they are not the usual ones it's not your street outside in in your neighborhood you know it's it's in these places agreed yeah and that's actually i'm glad that you said that uh the idea of investing your time to look for different angles because it's something that has become a personal mantra of mine in the last month i i've gotten to a point to where i mean we're we're now uh almost may of 2021 so we're coming where we're at here in the United States, we're sort of kind of coming out of lockdown a little bit at a time. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't been able to photograph very consistently yeah. in a very long time. And so like I'm I'm trying to get my uh, pacing back and get everything back. But one of the mantras I have is is don't take the obvious shot, like always look for a different uh, a different shot. Take your first one, but don't settle for that one like look for something else that's going to be different than what the obvious shot is and so uh, i'm glad that you did that and i think that this photograph that we were just speaking about um in india i think it just perfectly describes that that kind of feeling um of you know look for something a little bit different don't just try to make it specifically you know what you're going to get the most likes on instagram for or what's the most iconic but what's going to tell the best story. And I, I feel like that image right there specifically shows such a great story. Yeah, and another purpose, just speaking about this, one of the other purposes I have when uh, shooting in the streets is just to, because I mean, it's very easy to shoot, uh, the, let's say the, the street photography you can see now in Instagram and, and the social networks is always the same, you know, it's uh, just, uh, uh, geometry, shadows, and contrast, and these kind of things, which is, are mainly aesthetics. But when I try to shoot, it's not only looking for the aesthetics and and, and uh, looking for pictures with uh, nice nice uh, subjects or, or 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 something like that, but also just um, trying to to uh, say to the uh, spectator, this picture has taken in this place in this country, you know. The spectator has to be able to say, "Hey, this this is India," you know. 
of course, if you have the Taj Mahal <laughs> in the background, you know that it's sure. India, no? But, <laughs> but if you check other pictures uh, from my work, you see, or I, I, this is what I try just to show that uh, you, when checking the, the picture, you, you have to say, ah, this is this country, you know? Even if there are no iconic uh, places or iconic buildings or something that is very easy to recognize, you know? Yeah. But this is something uh, what I try to something I, I try to to do when shooting in the, in the streets in other countries as well. You know? Yeah. So you said that uh, you'd spent quite a bit of time in Ethiopia as well. Um, what mm -hmm. brought you to Ethiopia? Um, I think that that's like such a, a interesting place that um, one might find themselves. And I, I'm curious, like, what took you there that allowed you to um, get to know some of these folks that you got to take photos of? This is a very good question. Um, summarizing, it was uh, faith, you know. <laughs> I, I, maybe it sounds strange, but uh, uh, when I went uh, to Ethiopia, the first time I went, is, it was in 2013, as I said before. Mm -hmm. And by that time, I was just um, ending my master's degree. And, and I had, uh, since 2008 in India, I had in, in my mind the idea of going somewhere for volunteering, you know, and to, just to help because what I saw in India was really, really strong and, and I understood that people need needs help, you know, they need help. And uh, <clears throat> when I was ending my master's degree, uh, there was a coincidence. I just uh, met a, a nun, you know, and she told me, ah, we need a computer engineer in Ethiopia to teach students and so on. And, uh, I said, okay, that's the point. I have to go, no, because I was with uh, this idea in my mind, and this is the opportunity. So let, let's go, and this is how I uh, arrived to Ethiopia in 2013. In 2015 to 2016, it was just a decision. I went with my my uh, 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 girlfriend at that time. Now she's my my wife and we have a baby as i said before and we went together for nine months to also for voluntary just uh, to teach in the university of the salesian sisters there in, in ethiopia and also other staff the feeding program and other other uh, works they they do there you know and it was voluntary not not taking pictures the point is in ethiopia it's not like uh, Spain, you know, you don't have cinema, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't have uh, your friends, you're alone there. Of course, there are other volunteers, but two or three, no more than that. So you have a lot of time to, apart from, from working, it's different just going a couple of weeks or three weeks to, for volunteering where you go to work all the day and until you, <coughs> you, you die, you know, dying, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the, the point is when you go for this uh, long time, nine months or four months, depending on one year or two years, you have time for the things, you know, and, and I was shooting a lot in Ethiopia portraits, all the, all the programs they have, the sisters have there. I was shooting even weddings, you know, I was shooting a wedding for some of the teachers of the university. Uh, the religious celebrations, uh, everything. I mean, just yeah. everything, daily life. And the product of this, uh, all of these pictures, which uh, were between the two years, 2013 and 2015 uh, to 16, was just a book, you know? I published a book that is called Ethiopia, and it was a hard, hard job, but uh, it, it was a really nice uh, product, and it's, it's uh, so loud. There are no more books <laughs> to, to sell. But uh, th that that was the main motivation, just volunteering, and, and I wanted to help, basically. Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I think that makes it even more so, uh, falls in line with what we were talking about before with telling the daily life, because mm -hmm. I've, I've seen some documentaries and I've, I've watched other photographers kind of like behind the scenes, especially I notice, especially in like Southeast Asia and especially in Africa, um, it, a lot of these regions of the world, there's there's a degree of kind of uh, like photo tourism, I guess, that kind of happens. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I I think that there's some positive aspects that can come from that. I think the economics behind it can really help local communities. Um, but I also, I enjoy 
uh, a bit more authentic of approach. So the fact that you're actually living there um, and interacting with a lot of these folks, I would imagine, on a reg regular basis, or at least you're familiar with them, or you're talking with them, or you you know share uh, hometown with them, at least in a lot of these cases, I think it, it gives you a little bit more of kind of that embedded feel to where it's not just you're not coming in for it, you know, a couple hours and blasting a bunch of pictures of people that, you know, don't really know what's going on. Like you're coming in and you, you are a part of this, uh, this society and this community because you're there volunteering mm -hmm. and, and doing other work. Um, I think there's something that's commendable and, and really awesome about that. Um, I, I was talking about this uh, in one of my previous episodes with, uh, with Colby Brown, but it's like, I can't imagine like if I was sitting on my front porch and like someone that is you <laughs> yeah. know, not from around here comes in and just like doesn't necessarily speak my language, doesn't know my customs or my cultures yeah. and just like puts a camera in my face. Like, yeah, with a lens like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, they don't say anything first. They don't ask permission. They just walk up and they start shooting pictures of me. Like, I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, why are you, why are you here? And so yeah. I, the idea that you're, you're actually a part of these communities and you're, you're working with some of these folks, I think, is, is really awesome. Um, and, yeah, I, I think that's kind of another aspect of what makes, uh, what makes your photographs kind of stand out for me. Yeah, and, and also it opens a lot of doors, you know, because <clears throat> I have pictures from the same people in different years. And it's very funny when you show the picture of two years uh, ago, you know, to the same person and say, hey, you're here, you know, and they, they smile and, and then you can interact with them and take other pictures, you know, and you have there a theme you can follow to, for example, just uh, how the time goes along these people, you know, because... The, they don't live 80 years like in the world countries they live 55 you know sure. so it's really interesting it opens a lot of doors it makes things very easy and and it lets you take these daily pictures in a different way you know uh, in fact if in the website we will also it uh, again uh, you mentioned previous to the to start the the this interview you mentioned three galleries i have two galleries in the website and one, one is black and white, the other one is in color, and the other one is just, uh, it's called uh, Omo Valley, I think. <clears throat> Omo Valley is like the, this, um, this classic pictures from the, as you said, no, photo tourism, you know, you go there, you take the pictures, and you can, you just spend some, some hours there with, a, with a, a guide man, you know, and they let you take pictures from there and so on, but what shows the real daily life are the daily life are the other two uh, galleries you know these ones are the classic ones if you go to ethiopia travel into ethiopia with an agency from the united states for example they will bring you there and you will be able to take these pictures as well it's not that difficult to take these pictures you know the, the other two one the other uh, two galleries are showing uh, daily life you know in a different way you know because you have many, many opportunities. I, I went to this, for example, this lake. It's a lake where I was, uh, it was a lake uh, near to the place we were living in the mission with the Salesian sisters. And I went there thousands of times, you know, many, many times. So you, after choosing the pictures, then you can say, hey, this one is the good one, you know, because if you go one day, two hours, it doesn't matter the weather or whatever. You take the picture and this is what you want, uh, what you have. But if you can go again and again and again, for yeah. example, this street is uh, is the street of the mission. You know, I, I have gone through this street thousands of times, not, not just for shooting uh, pictures, maybe to buy some milk or bread, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like your street in your neighborhood. Yeah. And I mean, I think that that just gives you so much more advantage over um you know the the photo tourism type scene where you know it's not something where you're coming in and you're taking again kind of the obvious shot like the quick you know tourism mm -hmm. i was here this is the iconic shot of you know people in a tribe that are nearby um, and you know practicing some culture i think that you get you end up with getting like a lot of these types of shots where it's like you get to encompass like what daily life is like you get to show a lot of these people just doing like what's 
just normally happening. And I think there's something that's just so cool about that. Um, I wanted to ask you, how is it, like, do you have a particular approach? Because I think for many photographers and many street photographers, the biggest question and the biggest obstacle is approaching people to ask for their photograph or um, in some cases not asking permission for a photograph. What kind of approach do you put in place or what kind of approach do you use in order to get some of these photographs where you know you are getting to actually ask permission for some of the photographs of these people? Yeah, okay, I mean, there are, obviously there are differences, no? It's not the same living in the place, like uh, these ones in Ethiopia, where you have many, many opportunities, and you meet the same people in different days, and, and if you go through the same streets, you, you meet them, you know, and you can ask them for a picture again and again, and you can you can uh, <clears throat> build a relationship with them, you know? This is different. I think this is not answering your question, because it's like shooting in your street with your neighbor neighbors uh but uh, going to a trip of let's say two weeks where you are traveling to uh, india or, or thailand or wherever um <clears throat> for me it's much easier to approach people outside europe i don't know why you know this is probably something that is happening to other photographers and what i do is i usually ask for permission you know uh, probably my I look, uh, uh, I don't know, interesting, <laughs> but uh, I usually ask for me for me for permission just with a gesture, just uh, showing the camera or or just a smiling or something like that. And if they say no, that I don't shoot. I mean, probably is not is not going to be my best shoot, you know, my best picture. So I don't mind. And sometimes if. Uh, Sometimes I try to speak with the person before taking the picture, you know. This is intuition, you know, not always, you know, when to ask or when to start speaking or whatever. But sometimes, I mean, uh, if you, more you travel, more you understand how to approach people. This is the, the, main, the main point of this, you know. So I usually ask and just show in the camera and... Other times I don't I don't ask and I use some some tricks you know some one of my uh, best one of the worst, best ones for me is just to shoot and just keep the camera in my face you know until the person has to pass through through my side you know mm, mm, <laughs> just uh, hey move move from the frame because I want to take the picture you know but you have already taken it because the interesting thing of the picture was the just the person there you know so I take the picture I wait or I just down the camera and say like with a gesture like hey move <laughs> go out of the frame and then i just simulate i'm shooting again but i already took the picture you know yeah i like that i think that's a really good philosophy because mm -hmm. i mean i think that's also probably a little bit better for them too because they're not necessarily feeling that awkward okay this person is trying to take a photo because even i think that it, when i've tried to capture pictures of people on the street, as soon as they realize that the picture is about them or that they're in the picture, yeah. they change. Something changes Everything. and they're, it's, not the same, it's not the same thing anymore. So exactly. if they yeah. think that they're, they're not involved and they're like just going about their day and they're walking through, then you're gonna get a, a more realistic representation of that person in my opinion, just because they're, they're not the subject in their mind. Yeah, exactly. And and this is what I'm trying to use very funny because I mean if you are taking a picture of the Tak Majal, for example, it's obvious you are taking the picture of the building, even if they are in the frame or not. But sometimes you are in a non interesting at all street or place, you know, <laughs> and you are taking the picture and sometimes the people just look back like what this guy is shooting, you know. <laughs> this is this is not interesting at all, you know. But they just go and, and that's it. But you have the picture in that in that uh, in that place which is no non interesting but the person is you know is it difficult to i mean is it on that note like is it hard to blend in like i mean in a place like ethiopia or india like do you feel like it's hard to blend in if you're carrying around a camera or do you think that you can kind of blend in with the crowd more and and be a fly on the wall uh I think you are you are um, uh, talking about uh, feeling insecure. This is what you mean. 
Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. No, in Ethiopia, they are. It's very easy to take portraits in Ethiopia. They are very happy uh, of, I mean, of being portrayed. Or, and I didn't have the sense of. Uh, I didn't feel insecure. It is true that, I mean, how many white people are living there? You know that I, I was living in Zwai, which is was it was a town with uh, sixty thousand people. You know. The population was 60,000, mm -hmm. but uh, we were like five, seven white people in the in the town. You know, they know who who you are, yeah. you know? and they know you are. You, they know you are there working to help them. You know, so they they respect you at all. You know, they. It's. I mean, you can feel insecure maybe if you go there for two hours and you are shooting in a not not the proper place. You know, but mm -hmm. if you are living there, they know you and they respect you. And in other countries, in India, for example, I didn't feel insecure. But to be honest, I don't mind. You know, I have a camera, and for me, it's a tool, and I have to use it. You know, and for example, now I'm shooting Leica, and I don't mind at all of having a Leica in the hands. You know, if they if they want to take it, okay, for you. You know, because I mean, it's a tool. You 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 have a camera to take pictures, not to what is the the sense of having a camera in in the pocket. You know. So That's I think, point. of course, of course, it's of course it's a, it's a very insecure place. Then uh, probably isn't, doesn't make sense to take pictures in that place unless you have been there for some days or weeks, spending time with the people and uh, making them to understand that you are there to help somehow. You know, just with your uh, documenting the place and just trying to publish it in, in a magazine or whatever. You know, but if you are going there just for tourism, if the place is insecure, then I don't take pictures. Unless I think this deserves a picture, you know. Sure. But, th uh, no, no, go ahead. I think that's a really good way to approach it, too, is uh, what's your actual motivation behind taking the photograph? Like, are you, um, I think in your case where you were there helping volunteer, I think it gave you a good um, chance to get to meet some of the people before you know pulling out a big camera with a big lens and and getting up in people's face um i've also heard from other folks that um, work with street photography and and different cultures that um, the idea of just going through and walking through a town and you're just blasting photos left and right like you're going to stand out like the idea is to do your best to just observe first with your eyes, allow yourself to like find what's happening, feel out like kind of the, the mood of what everyone else is doing and, and find your opportunity there rather than kind of trying to force yourself in and just walking in. I think we're Americans and European tourists especially are just like so bad about that in general. I think, <laughs> and Japanese as well. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's just just tourism in general, I think, kind of has like a an, a bad taste to it. And so I think the approach of like not walking around with your camera always out, always taking pictures is is difficult. But also at the same time, I think that it can pay off because you're not going to be the person that's walking around with a camera that's drawing a bunch of attention. Um, instead, you're kind of blending in with what's going on as much as you can. And then uh, you know, finding that moment that you're looking for. Uh, to your point, like, if there's nothing to take a, a photograph of, you might not have your camera out, but it is also hard to take a photograph if your camera is not out already. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like that approach. I like the idea that um, not always just going through and, and uh, having your camera out always, but also being aware of, of when a good opportunity might be coming. Yeah, there is a key point uh, on this, in my opinion, because, I mean, to be quick taking a picture and a good picture, you know, and and to be ready when the situation deserves it, you know, you you have to train your eye somehow, you know, and the way to do it, because we are not traveling. I mean, when I was living in Ethiopia, it, I wasn't traveling, you know, I was living there. It's a different point, you know, but when traveling, you usually don't spend three, four months traveling. You go a couple of weeks, one week, three, but no more than that. Because, I mean, unless you are just uh, focused on photography and it's your work, if you are just working in a different 
topic, like like me, I'm a computer engineer, <clears throat> then you have to train your eye. And the way to do this is just, uh, for example, what I try to do in London and, and here in Spain is just, I try to, to go out to take pictures at least once a week, you know, and spend some hours in, in Sunday morning, Saturday morning, or Friday evening, or whenever it's possible to have my hands and my eyes uh, ready to take pictures, you know, because you have to be familiar with your tool. You have to understand it. You have to understand how to shoot, uh, <clears throat> which, which not, not only the technical issues, just your eyes, you know, understand the frame, the composition and everything. And if you do that, when you go out uh, to a different country, you are able to take good pictures, even if you are in a place for only a couple of hours, you know, because of course, if you do not train your eyes and your hands and the technique, apart from the technique, also other topics like the composition and so on, it's impossible to arrive to India and take good pictures in a street, you know, just taking out the camera and just taking pictures. Maybe you have, you are uh, lucky and you have a couple of them, but, but it's quite hard in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. And I think that's a huge point too, is, is practicing. Um, being able to go out there and put in the practice to make it happen um, is huge because I think um, a, a lot of folks that maybe are, are doing street photography or interested in it, they, they often think that it's just kind of like a, you just walk in and just snap, 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 snap. Like, yeah, I think you have a good camera, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's snapshots. But <laughs> as you start diving into it further, like you start understanding like the small details that really make a huge difference in the framing. And, and the only way to really find that is practice and, and continuously practicing um, to find different ways to photograph the same thing. Even if you're walking, if you're going for a walk on Sunday mornings, you might walk the same route you know, a couple dozen times in a month. But if that's the case, you or a couple dozen times a year, but like trying to find different ways of photographing scenes inside of that um, is also what I've found tends to be like a good field of practice to where you're able to um, see something differently than you normally would, even if it's something you've seen a dozen times before. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree totally with you. Yeah. So uh, aside from being in Ethiopia, um, you have you know, quite a few different other projects that you've gone through that I think are just like really fascinating. But as I'm looking through a lot of your work, I mean, I see so often that like there's, there's always such an emphasis on, on like the eyes. Um, in so many of the photographs, in so many of, of your shots, like there's always like such a, a draw to where people are looking and and their expression and their eyes and and what they're seeing, um, even like this this shot right here, um, his intense or his eyes and his expression are just so intense um, that it it kind of catches you off guard a little bit. Is this like one of those ones where you were just kind of shooting and waiting for someone to walk through the scene, or was this something that was uh, a little bit more set up? Uh, this one, especially this one, I think it was shot from the hip, you know, <laughs> nice. this was just, uh, in fact, I would say, I would say that this, uh, these pictures in Ethiopia in black and white, uh, is when I started to shoot, uh, let's say street photography understood like it is now at street photography, you know, yes, people in the streets and actions and situations and so on. And, and because I, uh, I felt it was like very embarrassing for me to take pictures directly to the people. I was just, st I started shooting from the hip with a Fujifilm X100, you know, mm -hmm. because before all the portraits, the, the like candid portraits and so on are taken with a DSLR camera, you know, uh, it's a different thing with a tele lens and so on. But these ones are, are shoot from the hip. Of course, I mean, from Ethiopia, I have, I think it's 60,000 pictures, you know, Wow, <laughs> which is crazy. So of course, edition, uh, it's very important here because I have maybe thousands of pictures like this one. And I chose this, chose this one because it's like the impressive one, you know, with the eyes, the, how the man is looking to the camera and so on. You know, so. 
Yeah, I, I love just the intense expression. And I was looking through and, and looking at some of your other work here and just showing like this, this album that's just portraits. I think you have such a strong connection with a lot of the folks because of, you know, this is just such a great example of, of what I mean. Just the eyes are piercing and they're just so brilliant that it just stops you kind of what you're doing in that moment. Um, is that something that you kind of try to intentionally bring into your work is showing like just the expression of, of people's eyes or is it something that you just kind of find naturally as you're shooting portraits? Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say it's something in purpose. When I shoot portraits, I understand or, or my way of understanding a portrait is just I mean, there are two types of portraits, you know, some uh, you can take pictures with a wide angle lens and you can catch the context and so on. I think this is important. But for me, when shooting a portrait, you have to to focus on the eyes because the eyes can say a lot, a lot just just looking at the camera. You know, you can understand if, it, if the person is happy or not, if it is uh, bored or not if he doesn't like the picture at all, if he is very, very happy of being portrayed by a stranger, you know. So I think you can say, or not you, people can say, or persons can say a lot just looking at the camera. And when I shoot portraits, I, I focus on the, mainly in the, in the eyes. I have understood later that also the context could be really interesting. And I have started to use, uh, uh, I mean, in Ethiopia, I started because Ethiopia was like the the point where I started to consolidate my way of shooting, you know, to understand that my main uh, topics are portraits, pure portraits, uh, street photography and traveling, you know. And uh, when these pictures you have shown, I'm focused on the on the eyes because they, they say a lot, you know. If, for example, the one with the blue eyes, the... the the girl with the blue eyes, yeah. uh, she, she couldn't hear, you know, she was deaf, deaf is the, oh, the wow. court work in English, right? Yeah. And, and the point is she was uh, in the classroom with the rest of the children and the rest of the children, of course, they could hear, you know, and this is why she looks really bored, you know, with the hand like, hey, this is very boring because I'm not understanding anything of what is happening around me. But at the same time with the eyes, she's like, asking you know she's asking you what is happening here you know she's with the eyes very very open and just uh, like like requesting something like explain to me what is happening or what is the situation yeah you know? it's so uh, it's so cool I, I really like how you brought that in and and showing just a little bit of the context showing that she's in the classroom and stuff and and understanding a little bit more of kind of behind that portrait i think is fascinating just because there's so much that draws you in about the photograph in general and then understanding a little bit more of that background I think is is adds just an extra layer on top of it um, when you're out shooting all of these portraits and you're in you know different countries and you're you're visiting uh, different folks have you had like any negative experiences like have you had people be upset that you take photos or anything like that or has it pretty much been smooth sailing yeah, of course. I mean, I, I don't, I don't believe a photographer haven't had a, a, a bad experience, you know. I mean, but uh, the worst experience I have had is just uh, someone saying, "No, no, I don't want pictures" or something like that. But nothing apart from that, no violence or something like that. That's just uh, someone saying, "No, no, I don't want pictures." And as I said before, I do not, uh, I do not push the situation. You know, I, I usually ask first. And if they don't, if they say no, no, I don't like, then I don't take the picture. So all of these, all of these pure portraits have been, let's say, agreed before. You know, mm. just asking, uh, having a, a good, a good reply, like yeah, it's okay, I'm okay, and then I should. Yeah, I really like that. Um, is there like of your work? Um, I mean, a lot of what you shoot is based on like where you're currently living. Do you go on like very specific photo, like photography trips or have you, or do you have any plans to do something like that? Um, or is it pretty much, do you 
Um, do you work just where you happen to be? Uh, if that makes sense, that was kind of a weird way to phrase that. Do you like, do you travel specifically with the intention of, of shooting photos or is it primarily just wherever you happen to be living or wherever you happen to be traveling to? No, no, no. Uh, the main purpose of traveling is just uh, knowing other countries and cultures and so on. And, and all of these places where I travel usually are agreed with my wife. So we choose together where to go. Of course, we both like the photography, you know, and, and we think about this as well, you know, but it's not the main, it's not the main guide or, or the main purpose of uh, traveling. I mean, if I have to choose between traveling and taking pictures, I just traveling, you know, without camera. It's fine for me. Yeah, that's, I think that's probably a good approach to it because I, I mean, it might get overwhelming if you're just solely going on a trip for photo, uh, for photos, just because of kind of the implications of, you know, you having to get specific shots. And I think that, you know, might be where kind of more of the photo tourism starts falling in and, and coming into play. Um, do you have like any particular locations, like bucket list places that you would love to go to, to, to visit? Um, cause yeah. I mean, you're saying you, you want to experience the culture and, and the different people, um, where, like what in your mind would be like one of the places that you'd like to go see next? Uh, I really, I really would like to go to Cuba, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's a very interesting place, especially because I mean, it's one of the last uh, communist countries in the world, you know, uh, an active communist country, which is really strange. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's very, very interesting. Uh, I would like to go to Peru as well, you know, Latin America is, uh, I've been in Latin America uh, a couple of times, but uh, I would like to go there because I have been in Southeast, uh, uh, Southeast Asia and I know some countries there and also in Africa. But uh, yeah, I would say Cuba and Peru now. I, God knows when, when it's going to be possible. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're in a little bit of a holding pattern for right now until things start opening up a little bit more. But I think Cuba would be absolutely insane. The, the colors of everything there are just incredible. And um, yeah. there's something about the cars there because they're all, all the cars <laughs> yeah. are, are from like the 50s and um, yeah. 40s. And they just have such incredible colors. I've had a, a couple of photographer friends who have gone down there and shot um, on like slide film and just created these incredibly rich, vibrant, colors that yeah. are just everywhere there and there's just something about it it just seems like such a colorful world to be a part of and and to kind of understand like the culture of those folks i think would be really interesting um, being in their unique position because of the way that the united states has an embargo basically against cuba yeah. to where they're not allowing any imports or export like what's that what is that like what is it like being in, you know, this beautiful, beautiful place that has such little access to certain resources? And I, I just think that there's something interesting about the story there that could be told. So, yeah, I yeah. think I think Cuba is a solid choice. Yeah, um, I, I think thinking about the colors, I would say Cuba and India are probably the best places in the world. You know, the yeah. colors in the, the these two countries. Are, are crazy, you know. Speaking of colors, I I did want to come back to India just because specifically there's a few of these shots that the colors in them are just incredible. Like the the blues and the the pinks that kind of come through in in these photos specifically in a lot of your India shots are just awesome. Like I, I love kind of the the balance of the dark and the blue on a lot of these. Um, when was the last time that you were in India? Was it in 2016 or have you been back since? Uh, I was in India a couple of times. The first one in 2008, as I said, where I found my vocation, uh, photographer vocation, let's say. In that moment, I didn't have a good camera at all. <laughs> this is why the decision uh, of, this con of this trip was just to buy a camera, you know. And the second time I was there was in 2016, and I was for three weeks only. And I really would like to come back. 
I really to get to come back. Let's see when it's possible. You know. Yeah, I, hopefully it can be sometime soon. I uh, I've really enjoyed seeing a lot of the work that you've been producing, and um, especially it's. I, I'm really happy that you mentioned specifically that you study Steve uh, McCurry just because I I definitely that was one of the things that I first kind of thought of, um, and even specifically this photograph right here was one that stood out to me and I was like, I, I follow Steve McCurry on, on Instagram and there's a good portion there. I saw this and I was like, that looks like Steve McCurry shot it. So I, I really enjoy that you study his work and um, of, if it's of any consolation, you've done a, a fantastic job of, of creating a lot of that same sort of, uh, that same feeling that he can evoke in a lot of his photographs. Thank you. The point is, uh, uh, when I was shooting these pictures, I was uh, obsessed with the the with this uh, Cartier-Bresson uh, concept, you know, the the decisive uh, moment, you know. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I was thinking I have only one opportunity of taking the shot. You know, <laughs> but after after Ethiopia, I understood that uh, this is not how these guys, Macari or any other photographer, they were. Uh, they work, you know, they shoot hundreds of pictures around the same uh, subject, you know, and this is what I did in in in, uh, in Ethiopia the second uh, the second uh, time I was there and, and in India because uh, I was in Ethiopia and India in the same year and I, I understood that I have to shoot a lot of a lot of pictures, you know, and this is how some of the pictures, I mean, of course, if you go to Ethiopia and you have uh, uh, studied Macari, you are going to somehow emulate uh, some of the his pictures, but the point is, Macari, as we were speaking before, saying before, uh, when he goes uh, to the countries, he spent a lot of time there. You know, he doesn't go for one day to one place, and that's it. Yeah. So it's daily life. And I said, as I said before, when I go to a, a country, what I try to do is just to shoot the daily life from the street photography perspective, you know, not just the iconic places and so on. And this is what Macari does. So if you just follow the same approach, for sure, you will find pictures very similar to him, you know? Yeah, I really like that. And I, I think that's a good philosophy too. Um, I think just the idea that, um, that you need to spend some time and uh, slow down a little bit. I think uh, I am extra guilty of it. I, I'll get to a scene and I'll be like, this is an incredible scene. I have to document this. I, I have to get this captured. And I'll take a, a handful of shots. And by the time that happens, I'm like, ooh, there's nothing here. I, I can't see it. But I think yeah. if, I, if I were able to slow down a little bit more, spend a bit more time, um, like I mentioned, not taking the obvious shot and actually, you know, exploring and investing that time into finding the different angles, then I just think that there's something that's really awesome about that. And it can lead to some incredible photographs. Um, this one that I was looking at here, I, I love the, the motion that you have of this, this guy that's jumping in the water over here on the left. I love all of the lines that you have. It's just, it's such an awesome shot. And I really do enjoy that. Um, did, and you said that you have to take like a bunch of pictures. Are you, how long are you taking um, in order for some of these scenes to play out? Are you kind of posted up or are you just actually out there uh, wandering around through the streets and kind of looking for different scenes as you go? Yeah, for example, in these pictures you have shown, um, I mean, what I have to feel is uh, like, I'm tired of this place. I think there is no much more I, I can get from this place, you know? So if, while I'm feeling that uh, it deserves to be there and trying and trying, then I stay there. Sometimes you get the picture in five minutes. Sometimes you need to spend half an hour. In this case, in this case, uh, I remember it was raining like crazy, you know, it was the monsoon, like crazy. Uh, and I, and I was, because the, it was the first rains in 11 months, you know? Wow. So people people were very, very happy, crazy, crazy happy, you know, they were just enjoying the water, just uh, jumping in the in the pool, uh, playing, the, the children were playing and, and and I understood that this this was a special moment, you know, I have to spend time here. So it was raining, raining, raining and I thought 
hey, I don't I don't care about the camera, you know, these pictures are really good. So I spent I would say forty five minutes shooting these guys, you know. Huh. And after, and I was just seeing them jumping and jumping and jumping and sometimes they were just stopping and, and five minutes uh, after they started to jump again and just playing and so on and I understood in that moment I have to wait because sometimes it's a matter of waiting you know just you are just there just observing and checking and just understanding the situation and and which is the the motion and what is happening and then you should you know so sometimes it's a matter of waiting just uh, looking at the at the situation sometimes it's a matter of just shooting uh, many many pictures in in a very short period of time but this is something you train and practice in the travels you know absolutely so what's next for for Yago what uh, you have your book that you produce that you know is no there's no more copies available do no. you have <laughs> next plans do you have another book plan do you have something else that you plan on working on that um, you can see in the foreseeable future yeah I have a pending work I mean what's next for me is my baby <laughs> for sure <laughs> Most of my pictures will be will be focused on her, but apart from that, I have something pending because when I was in in uh, Israel in Holy Land, uh, this is this is a it's a strange thing, you know, because the best uh, works I have produced are usually related to faith or just kind of uh, volunteering or something like that situations, you know, not not in these pictures because it's something is not uh, published in the. In the website yet, but Different if you go to if you go to project section, there is only one picture. You can see this one, oh, you yeah. know, this one. And and why I'm seeing this because uh, when I was to Israel, uh, what I did was not not just going for tourist tourism. We were for tourism, but uh, the context was just uh, we were uh, together with a, a, a brotherhood. Uh, a group of disabled people, you know, mm -hmm. and they they were uh, together with some volunteers. And the purpose of this group of people, which is called uh, uh, Hospitalidad Jesús de Nazaret, I could say it's like uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ hospitality or something like that in mm -hmm. English. And the purpose of this group is just to bring disabled people to the holy places, you know. Oh wow! It doesn't matter how difficult it is to reach the place, you know. And they go with the volunteers, and if it is needed to take them uh, and, and take them in, in your back, they do it, you know. And this is a very good uh, example of this, you know, because you can see clearly this is the Judah desert, you know. Yeah. And you can see the the person on the right is the disabled one. Just you can see, you know, that they have the stick to 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 walk and so on, and it's very difficult to walk through this way, you know. And the person on the on the left is the volunteer, you know. And they are walking to the cross because they are, they believe in Jesus Christ, you know. So this is this is a Catholic uh, group, you know. So this is something that is pending for me. Uh, it, this was shot in 2019, uh, but I'm in contact with the the director of this hospitality, and our our idea is just to uh, to keep working with them because they are not only in the pilgrimage; they work also here in Spain with the disabled people and sick people and my idea is to do a, an exhibition to get uh, money for, for them and also to publish a book because I think this is a story that deserves to be told you know I agree yeah I think that that is an incredible mission I think mm -hmm. uh, allowing those folks to have sort of a pilgrimage to places that are very meaningful to them I think is a, a great organization and that's an incredible photograph that speaks so much. Uh, it tells such a story in just a single frame. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Yago, we're, we're at the top of the hour already. I feel like it flew by. Um, it doesn't feel like it's been an hour already. Um, I'm super excited to see what you come out with next um, for uh, those folks who maybe want to see a little bit more of your work or possibly kind of keep in touch with uh, this project that you're working on now, where is a good place that people can see your work on on Instagram or your website? What's a good place people can find you? Uh, of course, in my web website is jagorruizphotography.com. 
and uh, also in Instagram. And the point is, Instagram now is a little bit stopped because of the baby. <laughs> sure. But uh, <laughs> hopefully in next weeks, I will I will start to upload some pictures again and, and so on. But uh, yeah, I would say in, in my website and, and Instagram, and also in my website, the, there is a contact section where they can find uh, links. Link three, it's called Link three or something like that. And there you can find some other interviews or, or other galleries in, in different uh, social networks and so on. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. And I'll also include links to your website and Instagram and everything like that in the show notes as well. Um, okay. So that people can follow along. But I think we'll wrap it up right there. I had a fantastic time getting to uh, talk with you and learn a little bit more about your photography and your work. Um, it was a huge pleasure. Thank you very much, Ben. It, was, it has been a pleasure for me as well. You know, uh, Hopefully your channel uh, will grow a lot and you will get many, many viewers and, <laughs> and subscribers. Thank you yeah. so much. I appreciate that. Um, and on that note, if you guys enjoyed the episode today, again, please be sure to subscribe. It definitely helps out. Um, I, I can't wait to do this again, Yago. I appreciate you jumping on. Uh, let's do this again. Let's keep in touch. And I'd love to see how the project's coming along in uh, maybe later this year. Sure, for sure. We'll awesome. keep in contact. Thank well, you cool. Much. Thank you guys so much, Yago. Thank you again. Um, if there's any other uh uh, if there's any other suggestions or anything like that you guys have for any future episodes, be sure to leave those in the comments and we will be back soon. We're going to be talking with Dylan Howell. He's going to be back talking with us about SEO for photographers, how to upgrade your website and make sure that you're getting the rankings you guys deserve. So without uh, anything else going on, I appreciate you again, Yago, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a good one, Yago. Thanks.